This is a podcast from the Royal Statistical Society. My name is Adrian Bowman, and I have the pleasure of the company of Professor Mark Girolami, who's from the Department of Computing Science in the University of Glasgow. Mark, you're the author, with your colleague Ben Calderhead, of a paper that's going to be read to the Royal Statistical Society quite soon, 13th of October. Would you like to tell us what it's about? So the paper really tries to address some of the open issues uh, with regard to numerical methods for uh, Bayesian statistics, in particular uh, some of the issues surrounding the practical application of Markov chain Monte Carlo to quite sophisticated uh, statistical models. So methods for uh, addressing these kind of questions have been developed for quite a while over the past 20 years. What are the particular new features that you have in mind in this paper? I think the main uh, feature about uh, this work is that we try to tackle the issue of designing efficient uh, proposal uh, distributions for Markov chain Monte Carlo in particular and to do that in a systematic way rather than in a an engineering uh, manner. So one of the problems that uh, are, has to be faced in these kind of uh, issues is the huge dimensionality of the space that you're working in, is that right? Yes, uh, an awful lot of models, uh, for example those that you would see in spatial statistics uh, are trying to sample uh, up to dimensions of thousands or tens of thousands uh, and these obviously have very very strong correlations and how to to design a proposal mechanism that can uh, can deal with that high dimensionality and high correlation is uh, is certainly very challenging, and that was something that we sought to address in the work that we were doing. So the the number of dimensions you're working in is mind-bogglingly huge. Is there some kind of magic bullet that you've come up with to help address the problem? No, I don't think there's a a, a magic bullet as such that is going to solve all of our problems uh, as far as uh, Bayesian inference is concerned over complex models. But I think what we've been able to do is move a step forward in the available methodology by um, embracing a a principled and, as I said uh, previously, systematic way uh, of taking as much information as possible from the model uh, and using that to inform the way in which we would make proposals to explore the the space that that we're trying to sample from. Okay. The the title of your paper is uh, Riemann Manifold Langevin and Hamiltonian Monte Carlo Methods. So there are uh, some very specific techniques mentioned there. Could you just briefly indicate in a non-technical way what's going on with those particular approaches? Sure. So the Langevin uh, method uh, is one which basically takes a a diffusion process, um, discretizes it, and um, corrects for bias uh, introduced by the, uh, the discretization. And the nice thing about this method is that it takes into account the gradient information uh, with regard to the um, the log density of the the model that is being um, uh, considered. The Hamiltonian Monte Carlo method uh, is quite different. Um, on the one hand, the Longevin method uh, is basically completely stochastic; it's based on uh, a discrete diffusion process. The Hamiltonian Monte Carlo method. Uh, relies on the uh, the solution of Hamilton's equations of dynamics uh, for, for a, a dynamical system. And so therefore the proposal process uh, is actually deterministic and um, there are certain characteristics which make this, uh, this method uh, very powerful or potentially very powerful uh, in um, sampling uh, met- methodology. And I think that the probably the, the main component that, that we have brought to uh, to this area is that we have uh, looked retrospectively to a paper from 1945 by Rao. And he was the first one to, to really ask the question, what is a natural distance between distributions? And when he then found out that that, distribu- that uh, distance uh, was actually formed by uh, the Fisher information uh, matrix. Um, 
he then realised that the space of probability distributions actually defined a Riemann manifold. That's interesting. So it, it uh, sounds as though the geometrical aspects of what you're doing play quite an important role. Could you expand on that a little? The, uh, the main point is that if a probability distribution um, lies on some sort of manifold, then that whole space has an intrinsic geometry. And basically what we wanted to do was just to exploit that geometry um, in a way that would allow us to simulate across that manifold. And that would allow us to, one, hopefully converge to the target distribution um, more efficiently because we are following the, manif the natural manifold. And secondly, once we reach the target distribution, that again, we would be able to make efficient proposals that would allow us to make near independent uh, samples uh, from the, the target distribution. Okay, I and mean, it's really interesting to be able to make connections back over 60 or 70 years to when this uh, idea was first proposed. But uh, the acid test, I suppose, is how well does it work? Yes, so I, I think that what we tried to do in the paper was uh, consider quite a wide range of statistical models ranging from something reasonably basic like the uh, Bayesian inference on a, a logistic regression model uh, to something somewhat more taxing uh, where we are trying to do inference on a, uh, a log Gaussian Cox uh, process with very high dimensional latent field um, and even more so uh, actually trying to infer the parameters of a nonlinear dynamic system described by a system of differential equations. So we, we looked at a, a range of problems um, and we assess performance based on how uh, independent the samples were, but we also normalised for uh, compute time. The key thing in exploiting the geometry is that you then have to consider the Fisher information matrix and derivatives of that matrix. So immediately, once we're starting to work in very high dimensional spaces, we potentially could have very high dimensional matrices which have to be inverted. Okay. And am I right in thinking that uh, just by the nature of the, the matrices you need, that these methods are tailored or constructed specifically for different models so that you don't have a general solution that can be applied anywhere? You would tailor it? That's correct. So these, are, these would be tailored specifically for each model. Now, of course, whilst this is then, uh, the methodology is general, the techniques uh, are model specific. And that means then that um, you would expect uh, there to be some uh, improvement in performance uh, by employing these Longevin or Hamiltonian uh, based methods which exploit the underlying geometry of the model as opposed to a uh, metropolis method which would just assume a, a non uh, Riemannian geometry. So how big is the payoff then for using these methods? Well, uh, and, uh, certainly in some models, um, so in the the large spatial uh, model that, that we looked at in the paper, there was about uh, three orders of magnitude improvement in the time normalized effective sample size uh, and that that was quite uh, quite miraculous actually um, in others for example the uh, Bayesian lo logistic regression there is still an order of uh, a couple of orders of magnitude improvement but that improvement deteriorates as the dimensionality of the problem increases so as the number of covariates increases then the computational load uh, starts to overcome the, the, the statistical benefits. Uh, and so there's a, a, a certainly a trade-off uh, with some models. There are other models, like the stochastic volatility model, where in actual fact, because the underlying process uh, has a, a covariance structure, which is um, tridiagonal, then the matrix inversion is... is, is, is actually quite trivial and so we get speed ups just by using the uh, the underlying geometry. 
Well, it sounds as if there's going to be lots of inter interesting things to discuss about the paper, uh, so we'll look forward to that. Can I ask you another question, Mark, which is that uh, at the moment you're based in a School of Computing Science here in Glasgow. You're uh, writing and uh, reading a paper which is uh, sort of centre stage, if you like, in the uh, statistical methodology. How does it come about you're in a computing science department? Um, yes, how, how, how does a mechanical engineer actually end up in a computing science department uh, doing research on statistical methodology? Uh, I guess, um, so I, 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 f I think that statistics in general has really attracted uh, people from many disciplines, from physics, from mathematics, and, and from engineering. And I think that I'm, you know, like most others who ha have come to the, the discipline. Uh, I'm, I studied engineering here at Glasgow, and um, the the issues, you know, surrounding statistical methodology. Uh, for me are, are extremely interesting and, and harken back to the sort of physics and, and um, applied mathematics that I studied uh, as an undergraduate. So for me it's quite natural in fact. So it's an expression of uh, how your career has moved that you're uh, shortly to go to London as uh, a Chair of Statistics in UCL. So uh, congratulations on that move. We're sorry to be losing you from Glasgow. Um, and. Uh, we look forward very much to the discussion of the paper and we wish you every success with that. Thank you, Mark.